Hi everybody, I'm Ryan Hall and welcome to the Team Load Urban Guard Flexibility Course. A lot of times at tournaments and on the internet people are always asking me how I become so flexible and how I do some of the things that I do. And basically what this DVD, what the following is going to share with you is a, a lot of the stretching and a lot of the different routines that we use here at Team Load Urban to increase flexibility from the guard. Because to be honest, when I started I was, I was reasonably flexible but um, nothing even close to where I am now. And really the keys are, the key is in the routine and I'd like to share that with you guys so I hope you enjoy it. All right, everybody, I just want to get into a couple basic situations where flexibility is going to either make or break you. And this can happen not only in jiu-jitsu situations, but also wrestling situations, which the fact of the matter is a big part of jiu-jitsu as well. Um, well, basically, a lot of times when you're on the feet, you're going to have an opponent picking up a single leg, giving you trouble. And this is the sort of thing where flexibility is going to come in huge and handy, because if you have the sort of flexibility that it takes to play a really gumby, weird guard, I guarantee you, you have the sort of flexibility it takes to give people a lot of trouble on the feet once you learn how to do it. So basically, if, Jim, if I'm inflexible and Jim picks up my leg in a single, I'm here, I'm hopping around, I might be having trouble. But if I'm flexible enough to have Jim jack my leg all the way up and like pick it up high, and I'm still defending, I'm not, you know, I'm not freaking out here, my leg's up pretty high, but it's no big deal. You know, I can kick through and kick out all these different situations that we can numb ourselves up in. It really isn't a big deal because even if Jim were to fall and pick my leg up and go to dump me over, you know, it's not that big a deal. I can kick out. I can still function in these different situations. So the idea here is, in this basic, on this basic, very basic level, it's very important to have this sort of flexibility. And you watch the best NCAA wrestlers, the best jiu-jitsu guys, the best MMA fighters in the world, many of them have this high degree of flexibility that's really going to help them out. Now, it goes exactly the same on the ground. If I'm trying to pass, or I'm sorry, Jim's trying to pass my guard, and he's tight passing me, so you're doing a smash pass, and he's here, and he's taking this knee all the way toward my face, or uh, my half. Right, he's taking this knee all the way toward my face. It's not that big a deal if I can have the flexibility to turn into a situation where I might be able to drag him, given different problems, as opposed to a situation where if we adjust real quick, it's like a downy pass, like a knee over. If we're here and Jim's taking this knee all the way toward my face, it doesn't bother me in the least. However, if I were hurting here and I'm like, ah, he's going to pass my guard. So I need, this is the sort of thing where flexibility is really going to come in handy because an opponent can be putting your knee all the way back in here and you're not, you're not freaking out about this. It's no problem whatsoever, in fact. And it's not, only, it's not only good and it's not only useful in terms of defending your guard, but it's also going to be useful in terms of you're going to be frustrating the heck out of the person because if, if someone attempts to pass your guard six, seven, eight times in a row and they're just like, man, what the heck is going on? Every single time I think I'm passed, I'm back in this guy's guard and I don't even understand how. From a psychological perspective, you already have the edge. People start on, they, they don't even understand a lot of times. The fact of the matter is guard retention is 99% technique, but at the same time, flexibility is going to be a huge help. And basically, a lot of times people are, in many cases, a lot of times people aren't even going to understand that. They're not going to understand that you're necessarily putting them back in your guard as a result, as a result of good technique combined with flexibility. They're just going to say, man, I can't even pass this guy. He's too flexible. And the second that someone starts to have that sort of an attitude is the second that they're never going to pass you and you're going to get them eventually. And that's really the sort of thing that you want to be creating and that's the sort of benefits that this course is going to be able to give you. So you're going to be able to have opponents, you know, who are going to be trying to pass you, giving you trouble. You could be playing this sort of a guard here, or you're upside down, you have, and you know, it's very, very difficult for an opponent to really understand what's going on. You could be shooting him with his legs here, dumping him over, going for heel hooks. You've been playing any sort, any number of different positions. In addition, if you ever watch Marcelo Garcia, even though he, he may look like a gnome and be super, super awesome with the X guard, which is both true, but the fact of the matter is, is that he's extremely flexible. If you watch him, he may not have the sort of flexibility, he has a different type of flexibility than, say, for instance, like a Holeta or, or like a Hodger Gracie, but if you watch him with that X guard, he gets contorted all the way in here and he will sweep you in about 0.2 seconds. And it really, and it's obviously as a result of an excellent, 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 obviously, usage of technique. But at the same time, it's that same flexibility that allows him to get into these situations. It allows him to get into these situations where he can take your back. And it's really going to be the same sort of thing that this course is going to be able to help you out with. So we hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll look forward to hearing from you and hear what you have to say about it. All right, guys, I just really want to take a minute to really explain to you what I feel to be the big benefit of all the stretching and the flexibility training that we do here at Team Load Urban. Because a lot of times... Um, it doesn't, you know, stretching and warming up and flexibility are really an underrated part of any sort of athletic training, much less grappling. Um, you know, I was, I mean, I had the good fortune of read a lot of books, I've read a lot of books by different people, and uh, one person that really stuck out in my mind was Dan Gable, 
And, you know, he was always, obviously, for those of you who don't know who Dan Gable is, he's arguably the greatest American wrestler of all time. And absolutely, no question about it, the greatest American, or greatest American wrestling coach of all time. And basically, um, one big point that he would always make, um, he, would, he was a fanatic about, you know, proper warming up, proper training, proper flexibility. Because, you know, plenty of different people, you know, you can look at different athletes from different sports. You know, John Smith in wrestling was phenomenally flexible, was excellent with takedowns, could get himself into positions that other people couldn't even imagine. You look at guys like Coletta um, from Grace Baja, Pedro Pano is huge but still flexible. BJ Penn obviously is, you know, comes to the front of your mind if you're talking about, you know, great American fighters and uh, jiu-jitsu players. Jeff Glover, guys like that, super flexible. And he really, it's, you know, the proof's in the pudding because the flexibility that you're going to gain from this sort of course is really, you know, you see the guys out there who really, really have a flexibility based game, you know, myself included, and it really, really helps out because they can get themselves into positions that other people can't even understand. And aside from, you know, the fact that these people, these are positions that guys haven't seen before and that you're going to be able to trick these people because as a result of them not seeing them from many people, um, you're going to have a skill edge and also a technique edge over them because they're just not going to understand quite exactly what you're doing. You're going to have, it's going to be very, very difficult to do anything to you. You're going to be harder to submit, harder to choke, harder to arm lock. People are going to give you trouble from positions. You're going to give people trouble from positions that you shouldn't be able to give them trouble for. But outside of the basic, really, you know, the obvious, you know, you know technical and, and combo applications that you have here are just your basic longevity here because a lot of times you see people getting injured in this sport and it's as a result of, you know, of not proper warming up, not pro you know, Im improper warm up, improper flexibility, you know, lack of, you know, lack of basic physical attributes that you're going to see in every major sport. If you watch football, if you watch professional football, professional baseball, these guys warm up for like an hour before the game every single time. You never see guys just get on the mat cold or get on the field cold because they're going to get hurt. I mean, and you really, if you're going to be a professional mixed martial artist, professional grappler, you need to take your career seriously in the exact same fashion. So basically what we're doing here is making sure that when you use this flexibility course, really consider yourself, treat yourself like a professional athlete, whether you are or aren't. Because if you are a professional grappler, you obviously you don't want to be getting hurt, particularly over something silly. And if you're going to be fighting in an absolute division, fighting in, you know, fighting against these bigger guys, really the beauty of jiu-jitsu is that you're able to win, and not only win, but and a lot of times dominate against as a smaller, as a smaller fighter against a larger, a larger stronger opponent. But you're going you're to be getting yourself hurt against these kind of guys if you're not able to be walk, if you're not able to be contorted and balled up into certain positions that are going to be a little bit weird. Because imagine, you know, if you're fighting, if you're three times someone's size, you can put them pretty much wherever you want. But it's really a matter of now, can they handle these positions and deal with what you've given them to start to try to combat and fight against you? I recently had a match against a 295-pound guy at a grapplers quest in the Purple Belt Absolute Division, and I got flattened, but I was able to come back and triangle him. And I think most people would have honestly would have been injured because, you know, just because of the positions that I had to get placed into. And I know that in the beginning, when I first started grappling, before I really started focusing on flexibility and this sort of training here, I was getting injured a lot more. Thank God I wasn't saying anything serious, but it was constant aches and pains. I'd be hurting my back, my knees, my neck would be bothering me. And that's when I really started to take flexibility very seriously. And honestly, that's when I also started having a lot of success against larger and stronger opponents in the absolute divisions. So I really can't emphasize enough how much of a benefit proper flexibility, pro, you know, having that elasticity in your joints and muscles can really help you in this sport. I mean, whether or not you fall down the stairs and you're, and you're not hurt anymore or someone is trying to, you know, land your face first through the mat, you know, you're really going to be in better shape, better physical condition, and also you're just not going to be, you're going to be very difficult to hurt provided that you can be flexible and that you can learn how to you know, learn how to let your body move without getting injured. And really, I think this flexibility course is going to do a lot of good things for you. I know it has for me, and it has done for a lot of good things for other guys on the team, and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so I want to run you guys through a couple basic stretches from the feet that I'm sure you've seen before. Maybe we have a couple small details that might help you out before we get into the meat and potatoes of the guard flexibility course. Basic first and foremost, you know, we really want to say, I mean, a lot of times people just think of the guard, they only think of their legs and lower body, but you really want to work out your upper body as well. So I want to go over a couple basic stretches that if you've played sports your entire life, I'm sure you've seen, but again, there are a couple small details to them that may or may not help you out, I think. So over here, I'm going to be reaching across my body, my right arm. I can have a blade, I can have the, like the radius, you know, blade facing in or not. But the idea here is I'm going to be locking my arm in. And now, rather than just pulling across my body here with my right shoulder, with my right arm here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in. Really, the key in this one is I'm going to be locking my shoulder in, locking my elbow towards me, and I'm going to be taking my shoulder blade in the opposite direction, my shoulder in the opposite direction, I'm sorry. We're here, and now I'm just opening my chest. 
It's difficult to see, but it's very, very different. This shoulder, I'm opening my chest and make sure that we're working that muscle. Rather than me just pulling across here, which doesn't do me a whole lot of good, you watch like seven-year-olds play baseball, they do this and they're like, uh, pulling across. The way that you want to be doing this stretch is you want to be locking here and I'm going to open my back, I'm going to open my shoulder. Notice how my left shoulder is going to drop. Nice and easy. Same concept, we immediately worked into a stretch behind our back. I'm now locking my elbow into me and I'm taking my shoulder down in the opposite direction. I'm using larger muscles on my body to move my shoulder and that's going to give me a better stretch. So we're here. I lock in my elbow and I drop my shoulder away from me. Switch to the far side. Lock in your shoulder, open your chest. All right, so make sure when we're doing these stretches, we're using the larger muscles on our body, we're using the larger muscles on our body in order to move the smaller arms, in order to move the smaller. So we're here, I am locking this arm in tight. I'm using my left arm here to lock this in tight. It's not loose, however, I'm not just trying to pull my arm across my body. I need, to get, I need to get counter pressure going. So we're here, we use our left arm in this case to lock our right arm in, and then we open our right shoulder. Basic stretch. You can come behind your head if you like, all the same really. Same concept here, lock in the elbow, counter pressure in the opposite direction with the right shoulder. And you should be getting a good stretch along your tricep, good stretch here. A lot of times, these are the sort of stretches that are also going to make you very, very difficult to shoulder lock. Um, if, you have, if you have extremely flexible shoulders, key lock should be extremely, extremely difficult to get you with. Not to say that it's impossible, just that no one's going to be getting cheap taps out of you with, with you know, a key lock that's not perfectly executed. So, moving on, we're going to have different stretches that we're going to be doing with our feet, with our, I'm sorry, different lower body stretches here. I'm going to be placing my feet together, reaching up, inhale, exhale on the stretch and touch my toes. Make sure that you're not bending. You don't want to have a big bend in your knees. You don't need to hyperextend your knees. They can be out right here, but at the same time, you don't want to be cheating and you don't want to be cheating yourself by bending. So make sure we're here. Inhale. Exhale. You can touch your toes. Put your foot, you can put your knuckles on the ground or once you get the hang of it, you can put your toe, you can put, I'm sorry, you can put your palms flat to the mat. Again, that's the sort of stretch you'll be holding for 10 seconds. Back up, five second rest, back down for 10 seconds again. Next, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be working a couple different stretches. The first one, we're gonna be taking our feet as far apart as we reasonably can, and we're gonna be starting to lean side to side. However, a little couple of tricks on this one are most people are gonna just lean down here and sink back. To add a little bit of stretch to it, what you wanna do is you wanna anchor yourself to the one leg. So what I'm gonna do in this particular case is I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna lock it to my left ankle, and I'm gonna get a grip as if I were doing a kimura or a toe hold. And now I'm gonna sink back. It locks my upper body into my left leg, increasing the stretch along the inside of my thigh. Hold, back up, back to the other side. Left hand in this case goes to my right ankle. Lock it in, sink back the other direction. Now immediately we're coming back up, feet stay in the same position, you can actually walk them out a little bit more now that you're more stretched out and you're more comfortable, I'm going to crisscross my arms and I'm going to hang to the middle, only now rather than hanging directly down, I want to come backwards behind me. So we're here, I'm going to take my arms back behind, walk them backwards, once again stretching out the backs of my thighs. Our next and final stretch here from the, from the feet is going to be the Buddha stretch. All we're doing here is I'm going to take my feet far apart, a little bit further than shoulder width. And I'm going to sit down, and just hang right in the middle. I can rock side to side. This should be working out your hip flexors as well, as well as your inner thigh. And now we're ready to move to the ground. We're going to get into the real meat and potatoes of the stretching routine that we have here. All right, guys, here's a quick variation of the Buddha stretch that's going to help you out a little bit. When we're here, when I start sitting low, what I can also do is I can just start walking side to side, taking slow, short steps, and then slowly making them a little bit longer, sinking each time that I step forward and back. You can move side to side, 
Like, have you guys ever watched, have you guys ever played like Street Fighter 2 and you play, and you watch the dolls and the yoga guy who breathe fire on everybody? He'd always do this before a match. You can do that too. And you can feel like a nerd at the same time if you actually know what I'm talking about. So that's your basic Buddha stretch. All right, everybody, here's another counterpart to our, our, to our standard shoulder stretch from the feet. Basically, the bonus of this here, using the jiu-jitsu belt, is that you're going to be able to change the angle of your stretch more efficiently than if you were just using your arms like this. From here, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stretching my right arm. In this case, I'm going to be gripping the belt, and I'm now going to take my other hand behind my back to the small of my back, palm facing outward, and I'm going to grip my belt there. You can adjust your grip as necessary up or down the belt to increase or decrease the amount of stretch that you've got, and also to decrease or increase the amount of slack that you have to change the angle of your, to change the angle of your stretch. So when we're here, I'm going to take my hand behind my head, and I can pull my arm directly down. However, because of the belt, I can also pull my arm outward behind my back, across my body, to the same side. And this is going to be able to change the angle on my stretch for my shoulder. So here on the other side, again, gripping the belt, gripping the belt. And I bend my elbow. From here, I can also straighten it out, allowing it to stretch my shoulder in here. Rather than just the back of my tricep, it's also going to stretch the inner shoulder here. Imagine if you're getting key lock, you can change your angle here, change the angle back, cross the body, behind the head. You can pretty much go to any angle that you can imagine here, and it's going to work your shoulder out very, very efficiently. All right, guys. Our next stretch, I know it's going to be extremely basic, but it's definitely important because working out the, working out the flexibility in the wrist is very important. Wrists and forearms. One, because it's going to be good. It's going to help you out, and your forearms aren't going to burn out as quickly if you're more warmed up. But also, you know, a lot of people are going to try to wrist lock you, and it's important to have, and it's important to have wrist, your wrist as flexible as they possibly can be. Now, most of us, myself included, cannot force the palm of my hand down to, you know, the base of my forearm, which is, you know, that's a nice thing to be able to do. But the fact of the matter is that you either can do it or you can't. However, there are going to be a number of just basic stretches that you can use to work out your wrist. We're here. I'm just going to come to the base. I'm going to come to the base of my fingers, down about where, right where the fingers start. I'm going to catch my other hand there. I'm going to take my take my hand backwards, nice and easy. I'm not jerking my wrist backwards. I'm not trying to stretch. I don't want to strain. I'm just going for a nice and easy stretch. Here, we're now going to go in the opposite direction. Same concept. Base of the fingers, pressure downward and inward. You can also rotate your wrist in, not just straight down, but also inward. Stretch out your fingers. Stretch out your thumb. Nice and easy, and then the same thing backwards here. You'll feel the stretch down, down through your forearm. And then back in. Again, nice and easy on your wrist, and it's going to work out your forearm as much as anything else. All right, guys. Another important part of the body to stretch out is going to be your chest. I know it doesn't have direct, it's not directly influenced, or it doesn't have anything directly to do with guard flexibility. However, it's very important because the fact of the matter is sometimes when you're playing a guard, you're going to have people try to hop into arm locks on you and you're going to end up in a, in a situation where you're locked on, protecting your arm, trying to come out of that um, and trying to come out on top and defend. And friends of mine before have torn their pectoral muscles uh, when they've had people pulling on their arms and it really is a result of inflexibility in the chest area. So what I'm going to be doing here to stretch myself out, to stretch out my chest and biceps, is I'm going to lay down flat on my stomach and I'm going to take my one arm, put it out to the side, take my other arm, place I'm sorry, take my other my off palm and place it flat on the mat. And I'm not going to angle my body towards the arm that's stretched out. So, flat to the mat, arm out. My other arm comes up and I'm going to angle my body, stretching out my chest on my right side and my bicep. You can make a fist to add some pressure, add a little bit of tension. And then switch to the other side. Lift up. Fist. Extend. You should feel some stretch in your off arm over here, and it's going to stretch out your chest on that side as well as your bicep. All right, just to get started, a couple of the first things we want to go over are principles. And the idea here is the most, really the keys to having a really flexible guard that's going to give a lot of people trouble to pass, and when they do start passing, you're going to be able to catch them in, uh, you know, triangles, arm locks, arm platters, you know, back takes from positions they can't even imagine that you're able to do. Um, the real keys here are going to be leg flexibility, hip flexor flexibility, 
neck and back flexibility. Upper back, not so much, but lower back. The really the big things here are you need to be comfortable being stacked, you need to be comfortable having your legs stretched back, and you need to be comfortable in, in awkward positions that are going to be a little bit difficult for a normal person to get themselves into. And when I say a normal person, what I really mean is a person who's not familiar with the different routines that you're going to use to be stretching and properly increasing your flexibility. So the first thing that we're going to be working right now is going to be your basic, it's going to be a, a basic inner thigh stretch that's going to, work you, that's going to help yourself out. And basically when we're here, what I'm going to start as if, I was in a, as if I were in a butterfly position, and I'm going to stretch my one knee, in this case my left, we're going to go side to side so it doesn't really matter, you go each leg independently. I'm going to stretch my one leg across, and I'm going to place my other leg directly behind myself, folded back. From here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be attempting, just like I'm, I'm pretty much putting myself in an omoplata position, which is good. This position is going to be excellent for the omoplata, it's going to increase your flexibility here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lean forward up my own leg. From here, this is going to be your basic stretch, and I'm going to try to put my face to the mat. After I get comfortable with this stretch here, what I'm going to start to do to increase the stretch is I'm going to take my, my left elbow, in this case, the same side elbow that you're stretching on the leg that you're stretching. So my left leg I'm stretching, my right, I'm sorry, I'm taking my left elbow in this case. I'm going to stretch it like all the way across, put it in front of my foot. I'm putting the back of my elbow or the tricep directly on the sole of my foot, and I'm going to lean out here to the other side, across my body. Right now, I'm getting an inner thigh stretch and as well as a little bit of a hip, a hip flexor stretch. And this is going to be extremely useful when you're trying to get yourself into a weird position when you're sitting up around an opponent's leg or in different spots. If you guys have watched Eduardo Tellis, who puts himself in positions like this, that's going to make him very, very difficult to pass. He's going to be able to sweep you from different spots, spots that you're not going to be normally, you know, that you're not normally going to be able to see because he's able to get himself into positions like this and remain comfortable. The key on flexibility here is not only getting yourself to the position, but also maintaining a level of comfort in there so you're not panicking, you're not getting claustrophobic, you're not freaking out, your breathing is still normal. So again, as if I were going to the other side, I stretch my right leg across, my left leg behind, and I lean towards my right. And I can also start leaning side to side across my body. To increase the stretch, my right leg is in front, I take my right elbow, in this case, my right tricep, put it across my body, and I lean. I can lean out in this direction to the same side, to my left, or I can lean across my body, stretching in both directions. And again, notice the similarities to the omoplata position. This is going to help you out there, as well as in your turtle, as well as on your single leg. This is going to be an excellent position to help you out, and it's going to stretch the inner thigh. All right, everybody, our next stretch is going to be another hip flexor option. So when we're here, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stepping to my left leg, keeping my right knee down on the mat. I want to put my right, I'm sorry, my left foot in front of my knee. In this particular case, I don't want to start out leaning, my, I don't want to start out with a lean over my, my knee over my foot. What I'm doing here is I'm going to start out with my foot in front of my knee. I'm going to keep my body upright, my spinal alignment intact. We're here and I'm going to be leaning forward. I'm going to be sinking my hips in. In this case, what's going on here is I'm going to be stretching my right hip flexor with my left foot up. If in the other case, if we were to switch, I'd be stretching my left hip flexor with my right foot up. So, we're here, I lean in. Keep my foot in front of my knee, my body upright, stretching out my hip flexor, and then you can start to come forward. Bring your knee down, stretching out your Achilles tendon, stretching out the back of your calf. Try to keep your heel flat on the mat for this. And now all I'm gonna do is come up like I'm taking a shot. Step the next leg up, sink in. Hips in, body upright, walk your foot forward, and continue. Now, alternatively, what we can do is we can stop in the middle and land ourselves right back in another stretch you've already seen, which is going to be right here. Stop up, hip flexor starts to stretch, start leaning, sink, straight into our next stretch. I can lean side to side, come up, pull your hands on the mat, my next foot comes up, Hip flexor comes in. Oh, I'm sorry, hip flexor opens up. Lean your hips in and stretch out. And that's going to be another basic option to stretch out your hip flexor and start to work out. That's going to give you an excellent open guard. All right. Our next stretch is going to look very, very similar to a sprinter stretch, and that's going to be coming right across here. In this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm taking my left foot, putting it inside, I'm touching my right thigh, and I'm going to be leaning forward. The key here is not necessarily touching my foot so much as it is getting comfortable putting my face down to my knee. I'm trying to put my face all the way down to my thigh, down towards my knee, because this is the sort of crunched up position. Like this doesn't do me a whole lot of good. Reaching out up here, it's not bad. I'm stretching the back of my leg. It's good. 
But what I really want to do is I want to get this sort of flexibility here where I'm putting my face down on my knee because in many cases, right now, this position, I'm right here, I'm crunched up. But a very similar situation that you're going to see when you're actually grappling is an opponent who's crunched your knees all the way towards your face and left you back here. Now, pretty much all I've done is switch the position, and I'm now leaning forward. And nice and easy. We're going to typically go on a 10-second stretch, nice and easy, and then just lean and lean and lean until you can get comfortable. You can start with your chin, then you put your nose, then your forehead to the side of your face. One, three, leaning all the way forward. Stretching your leg. On the other side, exact same thing. We're here, we're going to start up. I can reach to stretch in the beginning, nice and easy. Can reach across. If I'd like to, if you really want to stretch, you can stretch different, you can use a similar position to stretch different parts of your, different muscles on your leg by reaching across here, nice and easy. What I'm also doing is notice I'm stretching my back. I'm reaching across, grabbing the blade of my foot with my right hand. I'm reaching across to my left side. I'm using my right hand, turning it palm out, grabbing the blade of my foot, and nice and easy. I'm not pulling hard, I'm not stretching, I'm just holding the position, and it's putting a little bit of a twist in my leg, and it's stretching, which is gonna be different than a stretch that's more square on. Reaching inside, I can lean my leg out, open my body, stretch to the inside. Again, from here, I can reach across, stretching in, I can sit down, or I can start taking my knee to the outside, nice and easy of course, we never want to put any sort of torque pressure on our knee if possible, and we're just going to be stretching a little bit, and that's going to loosen up your leg in every single direction, because grappling, unlike most other sports, you're going to oftentimes find yourself in a situation, you're going to find yourself stretched in situations that you couldn't possibly imagine getting yourself into. Uh, mostly because a lot of times it's the other person causing you to stretch and as a result we really need to make sure that we have multi-directional very functional flexibility. Alright guys, our next stretch is actually, going to be, is actually going to be working your shoulder blades out and it's going to be helping you out in situations where your opponent's attempting to pass around your guard whether it's your regular guard or your turtle guard and it's going to be stretching your arm back. So what we're doing here is I'm going to start out in a sitting Indian style crisscross feet and I'm going to crisscross my arms. I'm going to take them in front and now I'm going to extend, and I'm going to lean myself forward, attempting to put my face on the mat. My goal here is I can sit across side to side now, stretching my back in a different way. This is going to be different than your standard back stretch, which is going to be right here, which we're going to get into in a moment. It's just going to angle my body in a slightly different way, and the slightly different angle is going to produce a different stretch for you. So remember, we're here. We're starting sitting Indian style, feet crisscross in front of you. You can lean all the way forward, extend your arms backwards to the sides, and now, we're going to be sitting all the way out. From here, to increase the stretch, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my elbow, I'm going to take my forearm and land it flat across the side of my leg, flush to the side of my leg, and now I'm going to open my, open my other hand and continue to look behind me. Nice and easy. I can hold for 10 seconds, then repeat on the other side. Remember, because we want to be increasing the stretch and changing the directions as much as possible, I can also angle, I can change the angle of my body, high and low, and that's going to stretch the muscles in different directions. Again, we're going to be holding for about 10 to 15 seconds, then we're going to be switching again, and that's going to be stretching out the sides of your back. All right, guys, our next back stretch is going to be coming off of the sprinter stretch as well. I'm going to start out here, only now, in this particular case, rather than, leave it, rather than staying put here, I'm just going to take my foot across to the other side. Take my, if my left foot is coming across my right leg, I'm taking my right, le I'm sorry, my right leg inside of my left, and I'm stretching. If I want to increase the stretch, I can grab inside of my own leg here. I'm taking the right hand, and I can lean but then I can lock myself in and roll my shoulder over towards the inside here. So rather than being here, it's not wrong at all, it's a good stretch, but to change the, change the angle a little bit, I'm going to reach inside and roll it over. And what I'm doing here is I'm stretching along the, I'm stretching along the lat, the shoulder blade area, and it's actually going to be working my back out in a direction that's going to be helping me out when my opponent's stacking me in odd spots. So again, we're here. <clears throat> I step my right leg over my left. Left arm comes across, open your back, turn to the side. Make it stronger to make it more of a stretch. 
you can put this hand flat on the ground. Notice how my arm is bent. I'm going to straighten it out and look directly behind me. And again, you can change the angle. Lean yourself down. Keep yourself up. Change the angle. Change the position of your hand. And it's not only going to stretch your back, but you can now use this hand here, my left in this case, to pull back nice and easy on my right leg. And it's going to stretch outside of my leg here. One more time. Cross. Change your angles. Outside, and now I'm going to lean back towards my right. If I'm looking to stretch my left, I'm leaning towards my right, and I'm opening my hip in the other direction. And this is going to be an excellent stretch to work both your back and your leg out. All right, guys. Our next stretch is going to be working out our neck. This particular stretch is often um, it's often misused, to be honest, and it's not. It's not misused. I don't mean misused in a bad sense. I just mean that people aren't really getting the most out of the stretch that they could be. And what I'm, what I'm going to be doing here is when I'm going to be rolling up my shoulders, this is going to be a position that you're going to see me personally use a lot, but also if you look back, um, if, if you look back at a lot of the best jiu-jitsu players that you know, have ever really stepped on the mat, um, like uh, Roberto Haleta or like uh, uh, Marshall Petapano Cruz, who's currently fighting in the UFC, you know, who's an absolute champion of black belt, um, phenomenally good. They both use the inverted guard. And if you'll notice, Properly, a proper use of the inverted guard doesn't really land ourselves, doesn't really land you here, flat on your back. It really is more of a neck stretch. People, a lot of times what's going on here is people are not using this guard because they don't understand how to properly get themselves in the position. It's not, it's not shouldn't be a horrible strain on your back. All I'm going to do is I'm going to rise up onto my shoulder blades and I'm going to let my neck stretch. From here, this particular position, you could be using your inverted guard but the idea here is right now I can use this position nice and easy to stretch my back, but I'm really not getting too much out of this stretch. So what I want to do is I'm going to come up on my neck. I'm going to touch my toes to the ground, and I'm going to slowly walk my feet back towards me, my knees back towards me. And ideally, I'd like to get my knees to touch my head. I'm sorry, to touch my shoulders. And now from here, I can go side to side, stretching out on the one side, and the other. From another angle, all I'm doing, I'm going to stretch my arms out. I'm going to roll back over. Touch my feet to the ground, making sure that I'm all the way up on my neck. Not on my shoulder blades here touching my toes, but I actually physically roll all the way on the back of my neck. Your chin should be touching your chest. Be nice and easy with this because in the beginning, you're not going to have. Unless you're already uh, pretty flexible, you might have a little bit of difficulty with this. Always go extremely, extremely easily. Night, I mean, it's a standard rule of thumb when stretching, but particularly when you're dealing with your knees, neck, and back, you don't want to be playing any games. So make sure that you're going nice and easy, gradually increasing your flexibility. You don't need to be in any sort of crazy rush. You'll be all right. So one more time, we're here. I lean back, touch my toes to the mat. I can have my arms out, arms in. It doesn't really matter. My knees are going to touch the mat and they're going to walk back towards my shoulders. So from here, with my knees touching my shoulders, I'm now going to go side. I can hold the stretch here to side. Both knees on the other side. And now, if you would like to work this into sort of a routine, you can start walking out, sitting up. Drag across, scoot out, ram behind your knees, and work yourself directly into your stretch. A lot of the work we do here, um, in terms of the guard flexibility of Team Lloyd Urban, is going to be used in sort of a routine that's going to work not only different stretches, but it's actually going to work it in with basic calisthenics and also different guard, different movements you're going to be using a lot. We're going to get more into that at the end, but you're going to see some of that. That's just a basic introduction to that right now. Remember, that particular stretch is actually a stretch of your neck not of your back. But remember, always be careful. Never put a lot of pressure on your neck, and it's always better to be safe than sorry, so take that one nice and slow. All right, guys. The next couple of things we're going to be working on are going to be for neck and back flexibility, as well as neck strength. First thing we're going to work with is going to be the bridge. Basically, you can bridge in two different ways. You can bridge on your neck, and, I'm sorry, on your head, or you can bridge on your hands. The hand version is going to be more for back flexibility, 
the head version would be more for neck strength and flexibility. You can bridge, when you're executing bridge on your neck, I'm sorry, a bridge on your head, you can either have, you can either be facing forward or you can be upside down. And we'll start with, and we'll work with both. We're here, all I'm gonna be doing is starting on my hands and knees. I'm gonna pop up to my toes and post on my forehead. From here, I'm gonna walk, whip my head forward and backward. Going nice and easy. This is gonna help your neck a lot. If you ever watch, if you go to any sort of any good wrestling room in the country, you're gonna see a lot of people working on these to warm up, and it's gonna make you have a very, very strong neck to help you out. Another thing we're gonna be able to do is I'm gonna be able to do this in the back of my head. Over here. And I just work back and forth. And it's gonna be increasing my neck flexibility as well as the neck strength. Now, alternatively, we can be bridging onto our hands. And this is going to be arching my back in a direction that's typically not going to be very, this not going to be very common in jiu-jitsu. However, it's definitely going to help you out flexibility-wise and be good for injury prevention. It's very, very common in gymnastics. So we're here. I'm going to put my hands, all my fists on the ground, and I'm going to bridge myself up. Nice and easy, holding the position. You can use your fists or your hands. The counterpart to this position will be the upward dog. All we're going to be doing here is I'm going to start on my knees, move to my stomach. Now here, put both my hands close to shoulder level, down by my chest. We're here, I'm going to pop up, come up, and bring my hips in, looking at the sky, stretching my spine inward. You can sink back, stretch your hips out a little bit. and then go back directly into the stretch. And that's gonna be your basic bridges and your upward dog. All right, everybody. Our next trouble stretch is gonna be involved with preventing or with being comfortable with having your opponent stack you up, um, crunch your knees up towards you, or push your legs beyond the normal range of motion. If you've ever been injured at all, like if you've played any other sports, football, basketball, baseball, and you've ever been injured, I can pretty much, you know, I can be pretty sure, almost to a certainty, that the training that you went to, the physical therapist probably had you doing this stretch at one point or another. So basically, all this one's going to do, this is going to be stretching out your thigh and really making it, and really increasing your flexibility, provided you go nice and easy and do the stretch properly. It's going to be increasing your flexibility and really going to make it difficult for people to give you trouble in terms of stacking your legs behind your head. So. For this, you can either have a partner, or alternatively, if you don't have a partner, you can just be grabbing, you can use your own belt. Over here, I'm gonna take my belt, loop it around my foot, my right in this case, I'm gonna keep my legs straight. You don't wanna hyperextend necessarily, I mean, don't hurt your knee, but at the same time, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna cheat and bend, because this is not a proper stretch. This is not what we're looking for. What I need is I'm gonna grip the belt comfortably from here, take my foot and I want to keep the belt up higher towards the ball of my feet because from here when I pull and I pull towards my heel I lose a little bit of leverage remember your foot's like a flag you gain better leverage up towards the top so from here I'm going to take keep my left leg straight in this case and I'm going to take my leg behind me if you need to help yourself monitor your knee you can keep your off hand checking your knee in this case to make sure it stays straight you don't want to get this sort of wobble factor going nice and easy Maintain, maintain your legs straight. You can lock it in here. I usually like to take this, take these, um, take the belt behind my head. Rather than pulling here, which is good, I prefer to cross to my left hand, take it all the way behind my head. And now, because notice how I'm arched up with my neck, I'm gonna use my neck, my, my neck and back muscles to increase the stretch. Now remember, if you can stretch this much without, um, without bending your leg at all, when you can bend your leg, you can stretch all the way behind you. It's going to be very, very easy when you're allowed to lift your hips up, as obviously you are in a jiu-jitsu match. So when we're here, again, my left leg, I loop the foot, take it up around the ball of the feet from here. My left hand is going to be in charge of monitoring my knee, making sure I'm not cheating. Now from here, all I'm doing is I'm going to be gripping, taking my right hand behind my head, and I'm going to be using my neck and back to increase the stretch. If 
you need to, you just shorten the length. And continue to stretch. You can hold this stretch for longer than 10 seconds if you'd like, but basically the key is just nice and easy pressure, and then you can just go through and repeat a couple times. Our next step on this one is going to be the opposite motion. Once again, if you guys have ever ran track or anything like that, that's going to be a big stretch for you, and so is this one here. Another partner stretch, but you can do this on your own. I'm just going to be taking my knee, holding it to my chest, nice and easy. And now remember, I'm not trying to pull it downward some more towards my chest, I'm really attempting to pull my knee upward towards my face. So here, I'm taking it up and closer and closer and closer to my shoulder. Nice and easy, I'm going to hold. You can grab your foot if you'd like to increase the stretch, but typically all you need to do is lock around the knee. Nice and easy. Let back out. Switch to the other stretch, and then go side to side. Again, I'm going to crisscross here. If you like, you can even practice rear naked choke grip on top of your knee. We're here. I come around, take my elbows together as if I'm doing a rear naked choke. I come back, and I stretch. This is actually going to be stretching out my thigh as well as my hip flexor. And those are going to be two basic stretches that are going to make it very, very difficult for an opponent to stack you up and make you feel uncomfortable. All right, our next set of stretches are going to be focusing on knee and hip flexor flexibility. It's important that you go very, very carefully with your knees, particularly I mean, with your hips, it's a little bit easier. You're not going to, your hips are big enough that you shouldn't be doing anything bad to them, even by accident for the most part. But your knees, you can easily hurt. I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not be pulling on your knees. I see this all the time at tournaments, people just wrenching on their knees. It's a bad, bad idea. You're going to do horrible things to your knees. Make sure that when you do these sort of things, one, you know what you're doing, so you're moving in an efficient and technical fashion. You're not just wrenching on your joints. Two, you need to have the flexibility required for these things. And three, you need to really work to develop the flexibility required for these things. So, in terms of, care, in terms of being careful, when we're working on our knees, all we're going to be doing here is I can work this particular stretch in two ways. I'm going to take my left shin, and I'm going to place it behind my right knee. And now, nice and easy, remember, careful and nice and easy is the name of the game in this one. I'm gripping behind my knee and taking it towards my face. All I'm trying to do is I'm going to hold this stretch nice and easy. I am not interested in like wrenching, wrenching my knees anywhere. I'm not pulling hard on my knee. I'm not doing that at all. When you pull hard on your foot, it's putting. A, you're using. A, just imagine you're doing. You're heel hooking someone. You're trying to. If you're trying to straight angle someone, you don't straight angle them up here. You straight angle them down here. So now, when you're attempting to do that, when you start pulling on your foot, pulling on your knee like this, you are putting a lot of strain on your knee. You don't need to be stretching any of the ligaments out there like that but it really is going to be causing you problems down the line. So make sure that when you're going for this, nice and easy, and just control pressure. If you need to, you can move your shin, you can move your knee, like if you'd like to, if you need to relieve the pressure, all you're going to do here is rather than lock, rather than placing your knee directly under your ankle, directly, like under the ankle bone here, you can move it a little bit higher up your shin. And it's going to relieve a little bit of pressure and make it a little bit easier on your leg. So we're here, nice and easy. Just nice and controlled. You're gonna be stretching not only your outer thigh, but your knee as well. And on the other side, same thing. Once so again, this is gonna be the sort of thing that's gonna help you out for the flexibility that you're gonna to need to you know need to really play game, play the rubber guard, different things like that. But I can't emphasize enough, you're not going to be playing that for very long if you injure your knee. In fact, you're not going to be doing jiu-jitsu for very long if you injure your knee. So make sure that you're nice and controlled when you're working through this stretch. All right, guys. Our next stretch is going to be working on our hip flexor. So when we're here, all I'm going to be doing is the base stretch here. Before you get into any sort of like the, uh, you know, the Nino Chambry, BJ Penn sort of leg behind the head sort of thing, what we're going to be working on is hip flexor mobility. From here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll backwards, I'm going to place my elbows behind my knees, in the crooks of my knees. So from here, I'm going to sit forward, and I'm going to pull my elbows outward. Nice and easy. What this is doing, this is working your groin and hip flexor mobility, and it's going to help you out a lot. 
because a lot of times when you start playing upside down and you start playing any of these weird guard positions or any guard position for that matter, the goal is to put you behind, put you beyond your normal range of flexibility. When I go through like a smash pass, when you try to smash pass your opponent and you have his leg locked up on your shoulder and you're tight and you're moving yourself in, it's really, really easy to pass someone who has limited flexibility because they run themselves out of range of motion very quickly. And as soon as they do that, you can sort of get that recoil action. You can push them beyond their active flexibility and boom, let it go, and their leg's gonna snap back and you'll be able to pass relatively easily. However, when you're dealing with someone who has just that sort of like ungodly, ridiculous, you know, BJ Penn, Nino Shembri type of flexibility, you can push their knee as far, as far, as far, as far, as far as you can, and it does, and they're just sitting there smiling at you, which is exactly what you like, which is exactly what this sort of stretch is gonna be able to start to give you. So from here, nice and easy, elbow behind, extend, like just open your chest. You can rock side to side. We're here. And you're trying to take your legs not only outwards, but also backwards. Nice and easy. From here, you can grab your feet, pull them in. This is your basic stretch. To make it more extreme, all I'm just going to do is duck my shoulder in. And I'm taking my leg further back. And now the final step of this stretch is to take the leg all the way behind your head. And nice and easy. Once again, I am not wrenching on my knee to do this. This is, not a, this is not a knee flexibility sort of thing. When you can put your leg behind your head, it's not a knee flexibility thing whatsoever. I really need to emphasize that. The key here is hip flexion mobility. Thigh, thigh, you know, like elasticity in your thigh. So we're here, I'm just ducking my shoulder in. And you just hang out nice and easy. And then all if you, if you want to increase the stretch, you just extend. You start to lean your hips away from your body. Start to try to extend, like imagine I'm here, and I'm extending my hip in the opposite direction. It's a little bit difficult to see, but the idea is I'm controlling my leg with the upper body, and now I'm gonna to try to extend my hip in the opposite direction. It works the exact same way with the other stretch here. Nice and easy, taking your leg behind your head. You have to work to it, but I promise you, I couldn't do any of that sort of thing before I um, before um, really started working through this course, and it really made all the difference in the world. Now, something else to notice: I'm not really warmed up at the moment, and it's going to be a lot easier for you to stretch. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier for you to have um, a greater range of motion in your stretches when you are warmed up. So, it is important to note that when you do stretch, it's important to warm up first. Try to break a sweat. If I'm sitting there stretching before, it's not wrong per se, but when you break a sweat before you warm up, when you break a sweat to warm up before you stretch, I'm sorry. It really, really does make it easier on you. It's going to increase your range of motion, and it's also going to make it a safer thing. You should not be injuring yourself in your warm-up ever, but that's going to be a big help there. You know, jumping jacks, running around, break a sweat, then start getting into your flexibility routine. All right, guys, our next stretch is going to be a basic butterfly. There's really nothing too complicated, too crazy about this one. All we're doing is you're placing the soles of your feet together, and you're going to be leaning, attempting to touch your face to the mat. Nice and easy. You don't even have to suck your feet all the way in. You can if you like, all the same really. And you're just going to lean down. Your knees are going to be getting flat to the mat. And this is going to be and this is going to be working out your hip flexors. If you can, you put your face all the way to the mat. If not, <clears throat> your toes will work just fine. But the idea here is all we're doing, work your feet out a little bit. If you come together, Hands together, lean forward. The stretch is not in pushing down your thighs, the stretch is in leaning your upper body forward as far as you possibly can. So one last time, we're here. I lean as far forward as I can to complete the stretch. And that's your basic butterfly. All right, our next couple stretches are gonna be involved with uh, more advanced versions of the things that you've already seen and the first we really want to work with is going to be your neck because mobility, on the, mobility and comfort on your shoulder blades and your neck is going to be very, very important in terms of both guard recovery as well as just guard retention in the first place. So when I am stretching over my neck, we can work a basic stretch here coming all the way back in. What we really want to get comfortable in is a sort of Gramby around motion. And really mobility, stretch, stretching in motion is very important because when you can work through your basic routine of stretches, 
You can also work through your basic routine of calisthenics and different, you know, different basic jujitsu motions you're going to be using, say like the shrimp, different things like that, like Granby roll that you're going to be able to work yourself into. And also, it's just going to be a good, it's going to be a good way to warm up because you're going to be combining a couple different skills as well as different flexibility drills. So we're here. What I want to be doing is I'm going to be rolling, walking around on my neck, walk side to side, and come up, duck myself back in. Ram me across my shoulders, stretching my neck the entire time, working around. I can sit through, sit through, back, through a shrimp. Ram me underneath. We're back to the stretch here. I roll out. I sit up. I'm into my sprinter stretch. Immediately come out of the sprinter stretch. I'm based out. I'll ram me underneath. Push through. Drag. Come out. Sit into your butterfly. From here, I can be sitting back, coming basically up in here, immediately standing, stretched out, and then work. Put your palms to the floor, touch your toes. Immediately now, you can work into the break fall. Sit up, scoot one way, scoot the other. I'm now sitting in, stretch forward. Elbow comes across. Moving here, grab you out. I'm back to stretching my neck. I crunch all the way in. And extend. Imagine I'm going for a triangle. Roll back out. Back to the butterfly. Back to the sprinter stretch. From here, you sit up, your opponent's stacking you. Immediately switch. Working in. All the way back. Nice and easy, we're gonna stretch. Facing out, coming up. You can now sit forward, upward dog. Back out, downward. Sit through, sit fights, back out. One line in your neck. The idea here is, it's really free flow, and you can sort of, and you can make up your own, you can make up your own workout, make up your own warm up. But basically, what you're doing here is you can integrate, you can integrate your grappling, your wrestling, you go to the feet, start working sprawls. You want to integrate a couple different things at once because nice, it's going to be an excellent way to warm up. It's going to keep you sharp, keep you focused on what you're doing, but it's also going to be getting you stretched out, getting you more and more flexible, and it's going to help you out a lot in terms of your, in terms of your guard retention and your guard recovery.